Well, now is as good a time as any to do the package openings until they came in. Three packages, one I can't show because it's too big to bring back here. But I will show it later. Uh, so let's get to the uh, first package. And see what this is. Oh, good. It's uh, the cable I need for uh, for my network. That's the one thing that came in. Now here's the second the second one. Packaging the smaller box. So I think what's in the box here are screwdrivers. Open that up. We got yep, screwdrivers. Good. I needed screwdrivers. These are screwdriver, uh, a nice precision screwdriver with a thinner tip. That's that is exactly what I wanted. I want, I wanted the thinner tip. So these are for electrical. They're for uh, working on electrical boxes and so on and so forth. Uh, this is what I need. To finish working on the, on my thermostat, this is what I needed to finish working on my thermostat. So I got it. Uh, great packages. What also came in was uh, a, a, a sort of like a, a handheld lawnmower. It's like a weed whacker, but it has a lawnmower blade on it, so you can cut, you can do the lawn. So I've got that now as well. Uh, I ended up uh, getting up around ten o'clock. Uh, because of a power outage and we had to reset everything. Uh, made myself a shake. That was my breakfast and lunch type of thing. And now I'm going back to bed. So <laughs> I'll see you later on and uh, uh, happy sailing. <laughs> Well, it's time for a quick unboxing video. It is 10 hours and 49 minutes into the first day of June. I am still... sort of knocked out from my sleeping. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Let's see what we got. Still can't tell. It looks like they're batteries. Still can't tell, and they're taped up very good. <laughs> the little layer of tape I have to get through. Okay, these are the 9 volt batteries I ordered. Okay, these are rechargeable, they're lithium ion. Uh, 
nine volt batteries. Here we go. This is good. We'll see how this ends up working out. I need it for uh, one of my electronic meters. We've got the chargers there, so we will see how this ends up working out. Anyways, yay for that. I will put them to be processed, to be uh, photographed, and uh, let the, uh, the service know that I got them. Oh, the last few days have been rough. It is 11 hours and 28 minutes into the second day of June, actually. And, uh, it's time for another package opening. We've got a package. This came in now. I just got up. Go to the bathroom and do some gaming. And so, this come in the door. Dropped off by uh, Canada Post. My, my local mail person or mailman. Getting the package opened. Ah, nice. It's the router I've been waiting for. It. Gonna have to begin the project to switch out the main router. Here's the uh, manual for it. Here's the power supply. Here's the router. So got all that. It's now a matter of, uh, of switching things out. I will have to fire it up over the next couple of days. And uh, do a base configuration. And then I have to do a network audit to switch over everything that needs to be switched over so that this will become the new uh, core of the network and everything else will sort of sit off of it so uh, I think that's going to be it for now and uh, we will see you uh, sometime later on today because uh, we haven't been vlogging too much. The opportunity to vlog really hasn't presented itself, but uh, uh, it should over the next few days. Uh, we'll see how everything's go how everything goes, and then go from there. Uh, alrighty, so we'll see you uh, when we see you. Well, it's uh, 22 hours and 56 minutes, 57 minutes into the day of. June 2nd, it's a Wednesday, and we are vlogging reality here, so when not, not much goes on, there's nothing really to vlog, or no points to vlog at, uh, the vlog falls off, and that's part of the reality, and so, I think there's a, other, well, other vlogs only show you the good points, we show the good, bad, and the ugly, uh, so we show everything in, in, everything in between, as much as you can. 
And so there wasn't much to vlog today. The notes are kind of at a standstill. I have to redo some of my notes. Because uh, now the notes will include uh, the Voltaire path, which will include Lion LeBron uh, of Lyle Nation, uh, Planck, uh, uh, for the, uh, Newton, and Leibniz. So will be the, and then also include Dostoevsky in that path as well, in that sort of that, that area. Uh, LeBlanc, uh, 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 Lyle, uh, Lyle LeBron will actually, of Lyle Nation, will provide a sort of, again, a litmus, te a litmus test, sort of a linkage, a parallel between the old and the new. And that's kind of where he sits right now. He's kind of a link between the old uh, understanding and the new understanding of the way, the way things are going now in politics. He kind of sits in that border point there and becomes appropriate to bring into uh, the discussion. So uh, that's what's going to be happening. He's going to be on the schedule for the next couple of months or so because uh, let me adjust the camera a little bit here. It seems to be a little low. There you go. Just an inch down. No, not even an inch. So he's going to be on the schedule for a bit. And just what happens is that things occur in history, and you want, to, you want to know why things occur in history. And a lot of times, that means going back and looking at other perspectives of history that were not necessarily included in the textbook. Your textbook history is always your official history. Okay? It's, the, it's the official version of what happened. There's always an unofficial version. And typically the unofficial version is more the reality of what went on. And it's, it shows you the perspective of how other people felt as the event was going on, as the, this issue was going on. And that will give you better a better understanding as to why something occurs, not that it just simply occurs. Because if you want to, if you want to correct mistakes for the future, let's talk about the Holocaust a bit. And, oh, you can't talk about the Holocaust. Well, you have to. Why? In order to prevent the next Holocaust, you have to understand what went wrong. What were the mechanisms that produced the first Holocaust? That's it. If you don't learn from that history, you're going to repeat it again because you don't know what you did wrong the first time. It wasn't just that one person stood up like Hitler. Oh, Hitler stands up and I don't want the Jews. Let's get rid of them. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. There was a whole system, and he was part of an entire environment. He simply was the face of the environment. He became the face of that particular environment. He wasn't the environment himself. But people tend to forget this, and this is the way history writes it is, oh, it's just Hitler did this, and oh, what a bad guy he was. Well, no, because there was a mechanism as to what happened. How did Hitler get into power? And the thing is, Hitler got into power just the same way Obama got into power, power, power uh, Trump got into power, Biden got into power. Uh, they were popular. Ironically enough, under the, uh, in the French Revolution, which comes after Voltaire. Uh, well, in the American Revolution, you got a president and not sort of an imperial system, but uh, uh, something close to it anyways. Uh, it was more of an, individual, an individualistic system. But given the same revol revolution uh, with Benjamin Franklin there in France, uh, you ended up with Napoleon. You ended up, you ended up with a uh, with a bar. It didn't just happen once, it happened twice. He had two, two Napoleons. He had Napoleon I and Napoleon II. So the thing is, is that the, the election of, des, of despots, the election of, de, uh, of dictators, is not an unusual occurrence. And every time you have these things occur, a lot of people die. So they think if you want to reduce the amount of violence, you want to reduce the amount of war, you know, hopefully eliminate war. If they say no, stop all wars. Well, how do you achieve it? How do you how do you achieve stopping all wars? That's a tall order, and so it's not enough simply to say stop all wars. You have to find, have to understand that there is a mechanism to doing this, and part of the mechanism, part of understanding what the mechanism me mechanism is, is how did you get into war the first time? What was what was the occurrence? And if you understand the occurrence, maybe there's something you can do to sort of prevent it for the, for the next time. It doesn't have to be something grand or great. It just 
How do we find the right mechanism, if that mechanism, understand it from the smallest point, and then work your way towards it and see how, how it goes? Uh, I, I, it does work to a certain degree, but there's always other people's opinions, other people's thoughts and ideas, and this is what the reality is. But if you're not going to take, you're not going to look at reality. You're going to say, "Oh, I don't want, I don't like Lionel. I don't like this, and I don't like that." You know, who do you think he think he is? Well, that then you're not going to get anywhere because you have to listen to people. Maybe sometimes you don't like. You have to go back and take a look at what Donald Trump did. You know what was the actual what was the end point of his policy? Donald Trump has policies. He had his statements. What was the difference between his statements and his policy? What were the outcomes of his policies? Right? Look at Biden. Same thing. Look at Obama. Same thing. Do the analysis. If you don't do the analysis, if you just simply pick off of what you've heard from other people saying. Right? Well, I heard this guy said I know this guy and blah 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 blah. Well, how do you know they're right? The analysis is going into not only that what people say, but how do you know that they're correct? It's that's the analysis. If you don't do the analysis and understanding how someone is correct or why someone is correct, you know, but what they're saying, then you're you, you basically sort of say you're a conspiracy theorist because the conspiracy theorist stays on the surface. They don't really get that deep into things because they're going again. The conspiracy theorist is not a is, they're not a professional researcher. They don't do research on a regular basis. Uh, they sort of do this on the side, and they have an interest in this, and they have an interest in that, and yeah, great. But the thing is, is that until you get into the research, you get deeply into the research, you're not going to understand it. And you also have to understand, once you get deeply into the research, how different areas of research are interconnected. What's the cross-reference? And that's what the Voltaire Project, the Voltaire Project compares the philosophers to the scientists. Well, who were the scientists? Who were the philosophers? And you're looking at the understandings of these people. So you're looking at all the work. Same thing with this guy. We take, don't just look at one writing, don't want one one book. Look at all of them. Find out who Dostoevsky was. How he th saw things. How he thought. A lot of times, how people think and how, what what they were thinking about their emotions are in their books. It's in their writing. And you can see they were writing evolve as the time goes on. You can see their evolution within their writing. So you can do the an the analysis of, of, of the writing from the perspective of this is the author telling you what he's thinking. And you can see his thoughts evolve. You can, finger, you can sort of get an idea of who he was. And again, it doesn't have to be male or female in terms of this case. We're talking about he is in, in the anthropomorphic anthropomorphic sense. This is apparently something lost on Lionel LeBron because he says, God, she is a great person. Well, you're going into the, you're going into the anthrop you're going into the gender issue. He does not have to be gender. It, it, it is in many cases anthropomorphic. It's about man, humans, not a gender. It can be a gender, but it doesn't have to be. Typically without in, you call it, in general speak, without a specific point, uh, then he becomes anthropomorphic, not specific to the gender. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for now. And uh, on to, uh, and continuing on with, uh, uh, the Yowie Vlogs. Uh, no, not the Yowie Vlogs. Uh, I finished Yowie Vlogs. Uh, finished our entire life. We're doing the YouTube stroll. And I'll go over to uh, our family nest next. So that's uh, where we are.